the, the trans organization with us and finally Homolo comes and then he does the training with the group and he says after he's like okay he said I want to train he said but when we train just you and me he said because they train hard but they don't train hard like I train hard <laughs> that was true that was pretty true yeah it's true and they distract me <laughs> I think about the training that you guys did back then. I don't know how how we could survive. Because you're all training jiu-jitsu like, like 10, 12 times a week, probably. Because even like when I was training for Worlds, and I'm doing jiu-jitsu six times a week and lifting, and I was everything was hurting all the time. <laughs> you know? And I was thinking like, like man, because I think we used to do too much. Yeah, that <laughs> yeah. was that was a lot, but I love it. Yeah. I felt good. You know, I used both people. Like nothing. It was like a, a difference. I think it was like a, the fundament. They have something behind, you know? Yeah. You have goals to reach on the workout. So, just go in the gym and work out, it gets boring and doesn't do much, you know? Yeah. But I think like the big change that I've made for the training you guys do now compared to back then, and besides that everyone's you know, eight, nine years older. But even even still, is we used to do a lot of conditioning in the gym, and now it's like, I realize, this let jujitsu be the conditioning. The tempo stuff helps recovery, a little bit of aerobic, but this is for getting strong. Out there is for, you know, practice, sport practice and conditioning. I definitely, like I told you, I enjoy a lot. Now, there's no reason for me to be burning myself out on jiu-jitsu training, so I train one jiu-jitsu, one jogging out workout a day, feeling amazing. Yeah. <laughs> My training partner doesn't like so much. <laughs> All right, so I want you to squeeze this between your elbows and knees. All right, and you know, a dead bug, opposite arm, opposite leg. Like this? Just one, so, yeah. Uh, oh, this one, the dead bug, they do it? Well, this is one way to do it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so pull up. So go this arm, this leg out. Yeah, there you go. And let's squeeze with the other side. forward, their hips come forward, yeah, and then rock, walk back, so like sit on your heel, yeah, do you feel that like in your adductor? Yep. Alright. Julian's so tough, man. <laughs> Julian? Yeah. yeah. I think I was going to explode his head <laughs> on Wednesday, seriously. I'm like, how did you not tap on this? <laughs> How's uh, Sam doing? Good. I see him training with like Bradley Martin and stuff. Yeah, sometimes they, they do some... Uh, you know, YouTube stuff. Yeah, so stay on hands and knees. Now I want you to take your right hand and reach to here. Yeah, under, and then up towards the ceiling. Yeah. Leg strength is one of the most important for jiu-jitsu. Leg strength and leg conditioning. But it's like a much much different kind of strength than like the powerlifting leg oh, strength. Because yeah. like for me, trying to play open guard with these big legs, I can't move them fast up up in the air, and it takes a lot of energy to hold them. 
like any kind of open guard, it's so easy for someone to just push my legs down because <laughs> they're so heavy. But yeah. I think, uh, honestly, they push a leg not because of the the legs on us. Yeah. Probably because and, of the hips. Yeah, hips and abs. Yeah. yeah. The hip is a little muscle that's got to hold up this whole thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's that's a big. <laughs> yeah. Because I get someone like you know uh, Connor Donaldson. Who? Connor Donaldson. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like he's got skinny legs, but like when his feet get on my hips, I'm like, man, his legs feel strong. <laughs> but like lifting, he probably can't even squat, you know, 200 pounds or something. But they feel strong. All right, so we're gonna go with them crossed down to the hip ten times, then middle ten times, then. Up. <laughs> The last one is not gonna happen. Hey, not happen. Uh, <laughs> what was the shoulder injury? The shoulder was fine. It was a labor, but uh, they uh, they when they did the surgery, mm -hmm. the doctor used a hip uh, mm -hmm. hip like to keep my shoulder open because she said I have too much muscle. Uh -huh. So then they stretched my nerve, almost ripped the nerve, uh -huh. the black on the nerve. During the surgery? Yeah. So I lost the movement on my shoulder for like two years. Mm -hmm. It's so almost like I never came back, you know? Is that like a malpractice lawsuit or anything? Not in Brazil. Uh, yeah. Not in Brazil, yeah. If I was here, I'd be rich. Yeah. <laughs> and then knee surgeries, how many of those? One. One. Just two surgeries. Okay. What about ear surgeries? Huh? I said, what about ear, ear surgery? No. You look like you're about ready for that. No. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's going to be forever. Didn't Hoffa have to have surgery? Yeah, but he's like, I think he was affecting his uh, ear. Is he <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know how any sound is getting in this one. <laughs> <laughs> Look, this one here. Yeah, yeah, don't worry about that one. I wish I had come here on Monday for that lift. Well, I was here. <laughs> saying you know he's got the shoulder problems with the nerve damage in there a lot of jiu-jitsu guys lots of shoulder problems I mean they're spending all day for years you know trying to break each other's try to dislocate each other's shoulders so shoulder problems elbow problems wrist a lot of difficulties in the bench press so making a modification to the bench press if you have access to a bar like this with neutral grips is gonna be good if you have to shorten the range of motion with like a pad or a board on the chest that's good if you can't do you know bench pressing with a barbell and you need to only use dumbbells like that's fine it's just all about getting some kind of pressing exercise so we can train that movement pattern but you know being the bench best bench presser doesn't make you the best you know at jujitsu so we just want to train train that those muscles but the specific movement isn't a huge deal how old were you when you started training, training jujitsu uh when i start to like really train for real like i want to do this 14 years old. 14 years old. So when you're, you know, I, when we get like before worlds and the kids start showing up from Brazil and they're like, you know, green belt or or the 16 year old blue belts, but I'm looking at them and I was like, you guys aren't blue belts. Like, how much were you training when you were 14? Like, how many hours a day? Man, I honestly, I basically, when I decide to do that, I train all day. Yeah. I didn't even count, you know, I just stay in the gym. Sometimes, my, you know, my professor had to kick me out. Yeah. It's like, man, you have to leave. You're going to pass, I'm going to die here. <coughs> So much training, you know. But uh, when I decide to do that, a lot of doubts of people what they are gonna accomplish. But I have to prove them wrong, you know. So I have to do my best. So uh, yeah. If you, had, if you had to guess at the hours, though, like six hours a day, seven hours a day. Easy. I yeah. I basically I spend I stay in the gym 8 a.m. Mm. and then I stay until like 9 p.m. 9 p.m. I used to go to another gym, wait one hour and teach one class. 10 o'clock to 11, and then I will be get back home at 1 1 p.m. 1 a.m. and then next day, same thing again. So I just basically, I leave in the gym. <laughs> All right, let's do like five here. What about, uh, that doesn't sound like a lot, a lot of time for school in there, only, only jiu-jitsu school? Yeah, I, I quit school. Yeah. I quit school, yes. Well, I, I begin on the first. I begin to study for a little bit when I moved to to Belo Horizonte. Mm -hmm. For the first like uh, six months, I went to school. But then after, I'm like, this is not gonna take me nowhere because I don't like it. Yeah. You know, I don't like school. I don't like. I don't like. You know, 
I'm crazy that now I'm old, I like, I like the money, you know? But uh, by the time, not really, you know? So, I believe that, you know, like, I don't need to, you don't need to follow anybody's, like, everyone's path, you know? You can actually feel a path and then give your best. So when, when, you're quitting, when you're quitting school at 14 to train jiu-jitsu all day, do people in, in Belo Horizonte, they were probably thinking, oh, this guy is crazy, like, if, do they know what you do now and they live in America and own schools and everyone knows? Uh, yeah, no, definitely, you know, like, uh, because, especially I come from a family, my mom, she's a school teacher, uh -huh. my sisters, uh, yeah, all, she, had, she had to be really mad about it. Yeah, <laughs> all my sisters, they, 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 you know, like, uh, master degrees with the lawyers, police officers, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, so, like, uh, they always focus on study and then I was, like, pretty much, like, the only one that uh, he didn't want to follow, you know? Yeah. She didn't understand at first, you know? It took me a long time to went back home. I, went, I, I left my house as a teenager, come back as a grown man. Yeah, yeah. Because I want to come back different, you know? I don't want to like, just show up like the way that I, that I left. But uh, eventually they understand and then they support yeah. me. Nice. <laughs> it took maybe like three years. <laughs> Up, sometimes I'm like I bridge a little bit, you know. Yeah. Uh, but whatever you think is best. So I, I usually have the guys get a little, whether it's feet on the, most of them go feet on the floor, but like a bridge up a little bit. Yeah, and get that little bit of hip drive. Okay. And like you know, bodybuilding people like maybe they're gonna watch this video. Oh, this guy's got bad bench technique or whatever. But it's like you guys aren't bench pressing to have nice looking pecs and that kind of thing. You're bench pressing to be able to create space and like that bump and press. Exactly, like that timing and the whole body action is really important for that. Oh, you're going to kilos today, huh? I got all kilos here, pounds, okay. pounds over there. Now I'm confused, I haven't done kilos in a while. <laughs> well, I, should, I should know kilos, right? Because in Brazil, that's how I do it. But hey, I'm American now, I live here for 13 years already. And, and we quit school, so... Exactly. <laughs> I hope my daughters don't watch this video. <laughs> Unnecessary reps while we're warming up because uh -huh. you said last time you did 45 and 25. Yeah, so we're just gonna do smaller warm up sets till we get to about that range. Oh, okay, and then we'll try and do you know maybe like 45, 25, and 5 okay. for five reps kind of thing. Okay, that's I usually I only have videos when I train jiu jitsu, not when I'm working out. <laughs> I feel like Naaman, he only trains hard when I put the video on. Really? I, I only go one way, I only have one speed. Yeah. 100%. Maybe I'll do four sets, no video. Uh, fifth set video turns on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm so used to videos, you know, like yeah. this. <laughs> uh, so do two or three reps here. French press a lot. I think that's why I have this injury on my shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> when I was like too young, I was like crazy, you know. No technique, nothing. Just push your weights, you know. So I think that's why one of the reasons I have this injury on my shoulder. You know? so <laughs> when, when you're using the hip bridge too, like think about when you when you touch for your hips to be down, and then like as soon as as you start to press, so it'll be like. <gasps> Okay. Like a quick. Like I uh, let it come and then yeah. bridge together. Yeah. Like same kind of thing. I mean, you have good ways to escape side control, but you know, I just bench press the person off of me. But <laughs> like the same, same idea where it's like a little bump, and then. <clears throat> yep. <clears throat> oh, but, that, but actually, that's the technique. Yeah. You know, like because when you when you bump, you know, like basically, like for example, you don't push. Yeah. Why you bump? Because when you bump, the pressure is gonna push back, right? Yeah, yeah. Then you have like, for example, on the hook, they're gonna be behind. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's actually perfect. I, I just throw them like you that. You just like, yeah. get out of here. Like you usually throw the things on. Huh? <laughs> That's what we call the, the Coach Chad side control escape. <laughs> All right, let's go five reps here.
How old were you when you moved to the US? Uh, 25? 25, yeah. So at the, at the color belts, how, how did you do at Worlds and, and all that stuff? Uh, blue belt, blue belt, I didn't do much very good, you know, like for people maybe they, they'll be good, but uh, I didn't win, so I yeah. got third place, second place in all the events. Second place, I got, I got third place too. <laughs> <laughs> second place Brazilian Nationals, like third place Wolves, third, pl uh, third place Pan Ams. I hate it because I trained so hard and then yeah. a couple of my friends, they didn't train as much as I did. They won and then I did it, you know, I was like, yeah, I'm doing something wrong. But I believe on the on the hard work, you know. And then, uh, as a purple belt, I begin to actually win. And then it took me like a, in a world championship fight, I went to purple into in a world championship in my weight class, not open weight, so people don't yeah. get confused. Purple belt into my fourth year black belt, I didn't lose one match. Oh wow! So purple belt, brown belt, brown belt two years, black belt first year, black belt second year, black belt third year. I lost the first one, the final, the my I take a fourth year black belt in and my uh, weight class. Yeah, uh, how old were you when you got your black belt? Uh, 22, 21, something like that. So yeah. you're fourth, fourth degree now? Now I'm fourth degree, yeah. yeah. How many years before or fifth? I think two years, two more years or three more years, something like that. I don't even know. Yeah, you know? I don't know. It's I don't know. True. I think I think so. Three years or yeah. two, or something like that. I'm confused, sorry. <laughs> I don't know much about the belt system. <laughs> Every couple of years, they can give me I another know. stripe. I, I don't, don't know, know if it's five years or three years, you know, like now you're making me, I don't know. Oh, oh sorry, Carlos. Yeah. I, I think the first three stripes are three years each. First three degrees, three years each, and then it's five years, five years. See, you know more than me. Well, they got the poster on the wall. <laughs> Sometimes I'm doing the warm-ups and looking at it, you know? <laughs> well, I just know that I'm going to be Coral Belt when I'm 51. So right. That's what I'm looking, you know? Yeah. Like, so I get... Uh, 51, I'm 38, that's like uh, 13 more years. Right. Let's go, Coral Belt, I'm waiting to smash all the young fools. <laughs> that's why I'm training Chad. So I get my Coral Belt and then I still smash the young guns. Like why you you walk out with the pants and the sweater? I'm like, cause I'm freezing my balls. <laughs> it's like so cold. I walk out in the morning, you know, in my house. Oh my god. That's Especially cold. it's. I mean, it's not cold like in these other places, but for California, it's cold. What's uh what's Belo Horizonte like? Uh, it gets chill, you know. Like in my city, I'm not from Belo Horizonte, you know. Uh -huh. Uh, but I live in Belo Horizonte for training. I'm from like a Jamachina, it's on the mountains, you know? Okay. So it's, it's, it's pretty cold, you know, like on the winter it gets pretty cold. But probably, to be honest with you, as cold as here probably. Yeah. You know, like on the winter. You know, like it's, it's, it gets chill. And it gets really hot chill. Alright, so this, we're going to do three sets of four. Mm -hmm. And then in between each set, the push-ups on the box where you jump up. Uh, okay, this one is a little too high for me. Too high? Yeah. Maybe, maybe. I will try. I mean, I make it look easy, you know. Yeah, so exactly. Yeah, you, <laughs> Chad, hanging out, you know. I'm just like a a, a normal mortal <laughs> when it comes sure. weight, you know. Sure. Just like coming in jujitsu is a little different, you know. He passed my guard once, you know. That's right on camera. He was not, and then he was not even trained. That's that's. That's bad, you know. And we've never trained, never trained since then. We have never, I've never trained with him since then. Two zero. <laughs> <laughs> Three. <laughs> Three zero. And that's why we've never trained it again, because I know you've just been. Well, you you've know, just been building that up. I'm actually sure was scared. You visit me, and then I reroll it to you. I'm like, I'm gonna go chat, you know. <laughs> this guy's best my going was a no, not even a change. You just imagine now. Slow push up down and then go, it's quick. 
There you go. Good. How many? Just three. Perfect. Same way that when you're doing box jumps, I want you to land soft, soft, soft feet like okay. a ninja, like a cat, like a ninja <laughs> cat. <laughs> I, I guess your, your story in Brazil is sort of how I imagine you guys, a lot of you guys growing up. And I remember asking for Raul about it, like oh, how much you train, he's like, oh, 2 p.m. to 9 p.m. kind of thing. And then he said he you know, dropped out of school for before his senior year so he could just train jiu-jitsu all the time. Because I knew that, I was like, these guys train all the time. Like, did they ever go to school? Or is school in Brazil, you just do jiu-jitsu all day? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I didn't know for all. He, like, he, he stopped school too. Yeah. I didn't know, you know, like, I, I yeah. Think I, he, I think he took like his GED kind of like a test. To, yeah, I did that too, you know, like obviously my mom made me do that. You know, she's like, okay, you know, you don't want to go to school, but you know, like uh, you need to study and do the test and then finish, you know, like yeah. finish like a, uh, uh, how you know, like uh, finishing and you'll be able to go to college someday, like you, you decide to do it, you yeah. know. So I finish it, then uh, but I just did a couple tests and then I finished, you know. Yeah. But uh, I, I, you know, I honestly I don't even remember how school looks like, yeah. <laughs> I don't miss it. <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah, because, um, well, in 2000, uh, 2005 or four, I'm not sure, five, I think, I spent six months in America, you know, oh, yeah. like, uh, before that I spoke no English, and then I was in Santa Fe, New Mexico, there's no Brazilians, ah. so, and then I hang out with uh, one of my friends, his name is Tim, and then, you know, like, uh, I learned, yeah. you know, a lot. I went back to Brazil, forgot a little bit. 2006, I did the same thing. I went back to Santa Fe, New Mexico, and then I spent some time there. 2007, I came to California. After the wars, I spent some time here, and then uh, 2008, I lived in England for one year. In England? Yeah. You're training with Hodger? I trained with Hodger and then Braulio, but I went there to like, do the treatment on the shoulder. Okay. So then uh, I lived with, uh, with Braulio, and then me, Roger, and Braulio, we get together like three times a week in training. Yeah. It was one of the, the most, uh, uh, you know, like one of the best experiences of my life as far as training, you know, because, you know, like uh, I had the chance to, to train with the two best of all the time every yeah. day, you know, so it was so, really good. So you call him Roger with an R sound. I just, you know, I just, because I'm kind of like American, you know, <laughs> it was a Hodge, Hodge. Well, but I've heard, I've heard some other people call him Roger too. Does he have people call him that in England because they don't know? Yeah. Uh, Probably, you yeah. know, probably they have because even like, uh, because like uh, it takes some, some time for the person to actually met the person like yeah, me, right? Yeah. So like uh, all my old students, they call me like a homolo, you uh -huh, know, like yeah. a day I already know because I taught them home alone, homolo, uh -huh. you know what I mean? Uh -huh. But like somebody come new and then like uh, they see my name, like a Romulo on the wall, they call me Romulo. Yeah, you know? I, I mean, I think I used to always call you that. <laughs> and and the way that everyone would pronounce it, when, you know, it was Gigo or, or whoever and these names all start with R. But like I just didn't know that sound. So, what are they saying? But but now I hear it so much that it's you know. You're not really. I like. I, I I learn a lot of Portuguese words. I can't say any of them on the camera. But <laughs> <laughs> see, he has bad teachers. You know, you have to at least know a little bit because you have all these crazy Brazilians here walking all my ways. Yeah. I saw the guys yesterday here. Yeah. They look pretty jacked. Yeah. What is this guy's doing? You know, Furão. Furão is jacked because he's like. But I never miss this training. Never miss a training, never never do a cheat meal. Yeah. Even when uh, there are all the fires, they had to evacuate his house. 
he comes here one day, Fernanda and the kids in the car, and he comes to work out, and he's like, he's like, I have one hour. The kids will wake up in one hour, and no joke, at one hour, like on the dot, Fernanda is like waving out the window, like hey, they're awake now. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Alfredo well, is a he's a he's very disciplined. Very. You know, like uh, I like it. I like Fernando style. The uh, when you were training at your at your hardest. Yeah, I was peak, what, 2007, 8, 9, 10, that kind of range. How much every week were you training? Whew! Oh, man. A lot, like, I would, I would say, you know, like a three sessions a day. Monday to Friday, that's 15, two sessions Saturday, 17 sessions a, a week. You know, like a combined strength conditioning. Yeah, so like... And then jiu -jitsu. Like, like 12 jiu-jitsu... Yeah, jiu-jitsu, yes, 12 jiu-jitsu. Five strength conditioning. And then, uh, and then, yeah, like uh, I think I was to do like a four conditionings in one run. Mm -hmm. One day I run, you know, I do like a day condition with you. One yeah. day was power lift, one day was uh, conditioning, and then that was twice a week. No, four times a week, actually, right? I think you used to train with me either two or three. Three times, three yeah. times. And one condition, two, two workouts, like a uh, weight. Yeah. And then one or two on your own. Yeah, and then uh, I, I used to run a lot, yeah. you know, like I think I run twice. One like a 30 minutes run and then one sprint, you know. Mm. So that was my routine, you know, like, and then uh, I, I remember like in, in 2012, I did my first camp in my gym. They came like, uh, I think like, maybe like, I'm not kidding, like 15 guys from Brazil. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, 14 of them quit Jiu-Jitsu. <laughs> <laughs> they hated Jiu-Jitsu. Like I have to do like this guy does to be the best. I don't want to, yeah. I don't want to, I swear, like uh, some people, they got depressed. Some people, they got sick. Some people, they got hurt. And then like one day my wife told me, you crazy. You know, like, they, you know, like, I'm like, I'm not crazy. They do whatever they want to do it. They try to hang, that's going to happen. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm used to. It's like, a, I tell you, like, a, people ask me a question. What's your motivation? There's no motivation. I just train more than my, all my students still. Uh -huh. At almost 40 years old, not a, a comparator no more. You know, like, a, the reason, I don't know. You know, I think I'm just used to. You know, like, I don't think, I cannot say that I have, like, a, any of like the guys that I train that's that's more professional than I am right yeah. now. Like I mean, right now, not even. I, I, I can attest to that. From yeah. the time that I visited up there. <laughs> so I yeah. actually I quit competition. I don't coach competition no more. Oh yeah. Yeah, I saw. Yeah, because you know it's pointless for me nowadays. You know, I just like to go on on training and then you know, like uh, it it drain a lot of my energy. To see people not. Uh, yeah. Want to be the best, but not the not professionals, you know. So the amateurs, uh, the hobbyists. This set as many as you can. I think, I think uh, people's like, I see like after I did everything for I see a lot of people like uh, doing like, uh, you know, like a clothing, something like that. And then people ask me like, what, how did you do? I didn't do nothing. I just live this. Mm. And people know, people feel. And then that's why like the people they represent and then they feel that they actually are everyday pojada. And sometimes they are not everyday pojada, but just when they put, they get motivated, you know? Yeah. So I think that's why like, this every, works every, so well, you know? Every other day pojada. Uh, I tried there actually <laughs> to be every day pohada, but I just can't, you know. Like some days I'm like, oh, I'm gonna take some time off, but you know, like uh, that. That's uh, I, I still have too much energy, you know. Yeah. Like uh, that's uh, if I don't, if I don't, if I actually don't drain myself, like a train and work out at least once a day. Yeah. 
you know, like a mess, a mess in my head. <laughs> yeah. Well, for the people who don't know, what does everyday pojada mean? Well, everyday pojada means like that's the two words combined Portuguese. Uh, in English, you know, like uh, every day, everybody know. Porrada in Portuguese means like a brawling. But, you know, like I told many people, one day I'm going to change the world. I'm going to go to Fantastic in Brazil, like the TV show on Sunday. And I'm like, oh, I'm the guy that changed the Porrada world for a good world. Because uh -huh. a lot of people in the beginning, they thought that I was like uh, supporting, fighting, uh, yeah, yeah. stuff like that. But like uh, we use the word Porrada a lot for everything. Like, uh, for example, you know, like... Uh, you have to like do like for example conference call in the morning then you have to teach like uh, some clients here and then you have to work on a, on your app you have to go and then work in a, all this stuff you know like I, oh, today my day is going to be porrada you know what i mean like yeah. today grind, like grinding, grinding yeah. exactly all like a, man you go someone on train that is really tough train man this train that is going to be porrada yeah. so it means a lot of things even like uh, our mom is everyday porrada actually or moms is the most everyday yeah. <laughs> because they do everything for free they don't yeah. even get paid for and then uh, that's why I think people really relate to that in Brazil it's very big because a lot of people they need to be everyday porrada to at least survive in Brazil yeah and then uh, it's something that uh, basically people feel good to wear you know like uh, as a brand as a brand develop I, I, I realized that people have to wear something that means something you yeah know? you don't just buy a clothes like this, you buy, you support a cause, like, you know, like sometimes you doubt, but like you put a shirt, you look it up and they say like, let's go, you know? And then, uh, man, I get tons of messages every single day of people, you know, like telling me how everyday porrada help them, help them yeah. like uh, overcome sickness, overcome like having no job, overcome losing weight, you know, like overcome like building a company. You know, like in Brazil, they have like a soccer player, singers, they have like a uh, businessmen, you know, like everybody that uh, like the mindset, you know, so um, I believe they also say on the back, I don't know if I'm like this one is the quote, yeah, one. it is, and then that's like actually the mission state of everyday pojada, you know. Well, I like these ones because there's something about the blanks of these shirts, of these ones that I didn't want to match with you, otherwise, I would have worn it too. Because <laughs> it's something like makes my shoulders look real big in that shirt, so I like them just because of that. <laughs> so that's why I'm wearing them today. Yeah. <laughs> otherwise, I would have worn the same one, but I was like, oh, we can't, we can't we can match. match so, uh, one this one is good too. Yeah. <laughs> teach the competition in class anymore. That, no. That's something I see even when I started coaching football or track or something that when you've competed at a high level and you hold yourself to this certain standard it's so frustrating if other people don't do the same thing. You know it's a, and I think it's a hard thing for a lot of people who have been very successful athletes to coach so well too. I, I mean the guys that you've coached I mean Felipe Pena, Gabriel, Edwin, you know, all these world champion kind of guys. So like, I mean, you're probably one of the most like decorated coaches, but, but yeah, that frustration when it's like, well, why, why do I still care more than you do? Exactly. When I was doing, it was, it was important for me to yeah. compete. I was leading by the example, yeah. right? So I was training, so they, they have to fall, right? Mm -hmm. I tell them a simple math, like a, it's true nowadays they want to smash me, right? All mm -hmm. of them. <laughs> You know, like we, we talk smack uh, with each other. And then I always told them, when I was growing up, and there was somebody much better than me, and then I look on the simple mat. Well, if this guy is so ahead of me, we're gonna race here on the street. And uh -huh. then you go, you go like uh, 200 yards in the front of me, and gonna sprint 300 yards. Yeah. Well, I'm not gonna catch you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So. How can I catch up with someone that is so much ahead of me? Well, in Jiu Jitsu, I have to train three times more than they train. Yeah. So I look at the guy, this guy smash me. I want to smash him next year. Well, I want because I'm going up the same amount of him, so I change. I train three times more the person. And then I see the results. Nobody told me to do that. Yeah. I just like, uh, it just common sense, you know? 
So nowadays, you know, like people like I do my videos like, well, but you don't get smashed. I'm like, yes, yeah, sometimes. Like actually, sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> you know what I mean? It shouldn't. Those guys, they should play with me. You know what I mean? Like obviously, Gabriel, Edwin, Philippe, Benny, those guys, they all build away. Yeah. I'm talking about the new guys, they coming. Yeah, yeah. They did what's supposed to be done, you know? They're not like the examples, you know, but like the other guys, they coming, you know, like they need, uh, I think they need new blood, you know? That's why I told Gabriel and Ed, you guys should uh, take it over and then they look up to you guys, you know? Because for me, you know, it's uh, like you said, you know, I'm frustrated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your hips a little flatter on this. Uh? Keep your hips a little lower on this. Is this what it's hurt if I do? Okay. This is like a little way for me to like not hurt the shoulder. <laughs> Legs, no problem. Shoulder, push is a little problem. Pull, no problem. Yeah. As long as it's not pull up. So. <laughs> He's a monster. Yeah. He's a different animal. <laughs> <laughs> but how do you say his nickname? Preguisa. Preguisa. Okay. Slot. Slot? Huh? Slot? In English? Slot? Slot? You know, like the, the animal they like. A slot. Slot, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, what that's what I mean. Because when he was young, he just like go on the, on the mat and he's always laying down uh -huh. and he sleep anywhere. You see, if, if you see him watching us, you sit there and he will sleep. But when it goes, the time goes on like to go, whoo, yeah. it's not sleeping anywhere anymore. You know? I, I remember when, when he first came to train with us before Worlds that year, and he was purple belt then, and all you guys were saying like, oh man, this guy is the next guy, the next guy, and I was like, I, I, I didn't really know much about Jiu Jitsu, but I was just like, well, he's a purple belt, like what, what's the big deal? You know, you guys are all black belts. And then no athletic ability, remember? Yeah, he's kind of like, You said like, <laughs> Hey homie, you think this guy is actually good? Yeah. Can jump? <laughs> Crazy man, the guy is a... Uh, oh my god, like that year! That year! Yeah, he, uh, he won purple belt. Yeah, double belt. gold. Yeah, and then brown belt the next year. Yep. And then probably black belt the next year. And then, yeah. Yeah. And then now, it just wins. No problem, we're back, baby! Yesterday I killed the guy in the circuit, you know, because I put, I'm like, a, before I like, at one time I let them do like a whatever pace, yeah. they want, you know, but then I look one day, they were doing like a 240, 500 ah. meters average. Yeah. I'm like, Janaina can do better than that. Yeah. <laughs> and they were doing the bike, I look, they were doing like a five calories for like a 45 seconds. Yeah. I was like, what's going on here? Yeah. I said, 140. <laughs> Four fifth of the bike yeah. yesterday. <laughs> Man, that was that. <laughs> Do you have a uh, heart rate monitor? Huh? Do you have a heart rate monitor? Uh, I have that too, and then I have. Uh, I was using whoop, whoop, you know. Okay. But it's very hard for me to keep things in my body, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like watch or that. <laughs> yeah. Know? I actually used for a long time, but then one time I was like, damn, I don't. It is no more. Have you used the, the whoop strap up here? Yeah, right? for training. Because when you're when you're doing the tempos, that's really what we want to do is keep you in a yeah. certain heart rate zone. I can do it. So we'll we'll start doing that. Okay. Because yeah. I know knowing you, you're gonna go too fast. You're gonna go too hard. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. you know, like yeah. when I want to like mess with them. Oh yeah. You know, but like a seventy percent, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, seventy percent. Uh, that's the 
Yeah, it was like the first day that I didn't remember, I didn't know. I told you, Chad, I almost died. You yeah, told yeah. me that was easy. Yeah. I think I pushed too hard. <laughs> Less because you know, I'm on the project for that's what the people like project 40. Yeah. You know, like now I'm project 39, uh -huh. not so jacked, but <laughs> next year, whoo, next year, oh my god, when I turn four, I'm gonna be shredded. Let's go. Like every day somebody asks me what workout routine you do it. Your 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 what's the call? Your link is always safe. Uh, I don't even reply, just like here, let's well, go. Thank you. <laughs> that when we walk out the first first time, like basically that time I was go to the gym and then mm. I just lift weights, right? So then I used to go with you and then you're like, okay, you do the weights, right? Then lift. And then you do like, okay, let's see like 315. Okay, next week we're gonna do like 325, 225, 325, 400. And then I'm like, oh, I actually can feel my my strength uh, yeah. build, you know. Before that, I was like, oh my god, I never I never knew that. Like when we begin to work out, mm -hmm. like uh, we begin, like I told you, Chad, I was traveling. I said I couldn't oh, yeah. do the new routine. This one now I'm being like uh, never miss once. Like uh, the, that's the uh, fifth week. Yeah. Oh my god, man, like. Like different, you know. Dollar worth it. <laughs> Go invest in yourself, you know. If you wanna get strong for jiu jitsu. Just adapt, you know. The things that we can do it with that. <laughs> He's been back, and uh, so he's, he's a little out of shape. 
But <laughs> Octavio is funny because he can't remember any of the exercises. Really? Any. Like Gabriel always like this too. Like I, I do it, I show it to him, and then he's supposed to do it five seconds later and he forgets. <laughs> he just follows foot up. <laughs> he's just following. Yeah. Foot always. Octavio is a he's very disciplined too, you know? Like yeah. He's a machine, trains hard. He definitely trains hard. He came to the gym right before, yeah, yeah. like, a, he was not trained too, he was out of shape. And he didn't want to train. He's like, oh, man, I'm so tired, man. I'm dead, you know. I don't know if I'm going to be able to compete. I'm like, no, man, it's your first day. Yeah. Relax, you know. And all sad, like, two weeks later, he's like a machine again, you know. Yeah. He's good. I, I really like, uh, I really like Otavio. Yeah. Style. He just have one speed. Yes, he does. He just, he, you know, like, if you go with Otavio, you have to, like, be aware, like a yeah. tournament. You cannot be like, oh, let me feel here. No, no, no. Yeah. I see this before, like, guys getting hurt the neck. First, like, he grabbed you, uh -huh. he's gonna shake you, like, 100%. You know? but, well, and especially because, like, when I train with Furao, you know, Furao is teaching. Uh -huh. But that training for Otavio, that was his training, that's his competition training. <laughs> So it's, you know, for now, like, okay, kind of let you get to this position so he can work from there. Otavio, I don't give a shit about that. No. <laughs> He's just smashing. He's just good trying and to kill you. Then he gets on top and I'm like, you weigh like 500 pounds. How are you doing? How are you doing this? It's cold back then, then, man. Yeah. Pressure. He just like pulls himself onto you and, man, yeah, his stuff. This is a decent present. Great scene. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chad. Appreciate it, man. I'm feeling good. Thank you for the, yeah. the workout, you know? Yeah. It's been uh, helping a lot. You know, like I never stopped, you know, like even that I was walking out to my own, I was still doing like a jungle out to train system back in 2012. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and now on the, on the, on the new one, feeling good, feeling yeah. good.